Hi, this is Nancy L.T. Hamilton. Welcome back. And uh, today's video is going to be flush setting uh, faceted stones. And it's going to be extremely exciting as usual. <laughs> um, Jim Dowling taught me this technique of quite a few years ago. There are many other ways to set these, but I'm going to show you the way that I think is the easiest. So thank you, Jim. And uh, let's get going. So when setting stones, um, occasionally you're going to encounter situations where it's not going to work for what you want. Um, let's see, we've got some really tiny little 1.5 millimeter, 2 millimeter stones. And to make a little setting for them, we'll drive you insane, a little basket setting or something. So um, a good alternative is to do the flesh set stone. A flesh set stone is basically you drill out a seat uh, and the stone is popped into um, the seat um, and there's a small rub over of metal that goes around it to hold it into place. Um, I have a little sample here which we'll do a close-up of, of three stones that have been flush set. There's no prongs, there's no beads, um, it's just literally uh, almost inlaid into the metal. So, um, there's a couple of doodahs that are important to know for flush, uh, for flush setting. One is you don't want to use stones that are um, over four millimeter. The problem happens um, with the crown of the stone, which is, I have a little diagram. This part is the crown here. And the bigger the stone, the higher this sits up on the metal and the goal ultimately in setting these flush set stones is to have them at or below the level, slightly below the level of the metal. One of the things that this does is it protects the stone from wear and abuse um, and the rubbed over, the fine thin little rubbed over edge from wearing and having the stones fall out. So um, that's why you don't usually want to go over four millimeters and four millimeters is kind of pushing it. It's great for little tiny guys like the 1.5 millimeters. Um, it, if you are over 40 or have vision problems, you will absolutely have to have a magnifier uh, like this and preferably with its largest magnification because it's really hard to see 1.5 millimeters settings. But it is possible. I've done it myself, so we know it can happen with you if I can do it. Um, the other thing is, so you want 1.5 millimeter to 4 millimeter. Uh, another thing is that for this method in particular, you need stones that are going to withstand the little bit of force that we're going to, which I actually probably isn't a little bit, but some force uh, on the edges of them. You don't want um, an emerald, let's say, to set this way because the force can crack the emerald um, because it has, it's a strong stone, but it has a lot, usually has a lot of flaws and fractures in it. So the chances of it chipping are really great. So what I like to use is CZs and diamonds, since I don't usually work in sapphires, rubies, and spinels. Well, I do work in spinels. Um, but those five are probably the best stones to use for this technique. And for you, for practicing, get yourself a bunch of different size, like 1.5 to 2.5, 3 millimeter CZs, which you can get a whole pack of for a couple bucks, and just Practice, practice, you know, do one after another until you've got the technique down. So, um, let's see. Another thing that you, it needs to be taken into account is the metal thickness. You're, you don't want the um, coulée of the stone to poke through the metal underneath and scratch the wearer. Um, so, generally, the rule of thumb is for two millimeter or less stones, you can get away with 20 gauge metal. And anything over two millimeters, you need to use 18 gauge. If you do have a piece, let's say you're making it in 22 gauge, you don't have to um, abandon the whole idea. What you can do is, th there's three techniques you can do. One is you can double up, like this metal here is a double layer of copper. Um, you can sweat solder a, a backing onto um, the, the metal that you're working with and just have this one area that's raised up for setting the stone. You can also solder a small jump ring that's um, a little less than the diameter of your stone to the back side of where you're going to be setting. And I can't remember the third 
where you could solder something on top too, a little random circle, circle of um, metal. See, I did remember on the top. So bottom, top, or uh, jump ring solder to help increase the depth of the metal so that the coulee doesn't stick through. So um, I'm going to get ready to show you how to do this. Stop talking. Okay. Hi. So um, the first thing you need to do is measure your stone. Um, and to help facilitate picking the stone up, um, and especially when you're dealing with 1.5 and 2 millimeter stones, you want to have something that's going to stick onto it. Um, this is basically a little Chinese bamboo pen. And all this is is some beeswax that, I, that you warm in your hands and then kind of roll into a cone and cram it in there. I've done this fancy one here. This one I think has a little um, orange flake shellac mixed in with it. It also has cap fur, chips of metal, and all kinds of other things in there. <laughs> and they get really dirty and scuzzy, but basically before you're going to use them, you're going to warm them up with your fingers so that they're sticky. And I'm going to be working with a 2 millimeter CZ. Um, this, these machine made CZs, it's pretty pretty uh, easy to, they're pretty easy to set because they are all machine cut so they're generally the same exact size. Um, but if you're working with um, a stone that is not man-made or machine, I mean that is not, that it's not machine made, there's always discrepancies in the stones. Um, some stones aren't truly round. Sometimes the, um, there's my picture. The girdle is very thick or very thin. Um, the pavilion uh, can be short and squat. Table can be crooked itself. So it's really important, especially if you're using uh, hand cut stones, to, is to measure your depth and your diameter of your stone because that's going to tell you a few things. It's going to tell you, number one, what size drill bit you need and it's also going to tell you what size burr you need for um, cutting the seat. Um, so the rule of thumb f that I learned was that you measure the diameter of your stone and I will show you, I'm going to go through the whole thing visually too, is you measure the diameter of the stone and then approximately a third of that is the size of the drill bit you want to use. So the hole that you're drilling through the metal will be a third of the size of the di diameter. Got it. So in this case, I absolutely need my optimizers on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you look goofy again. And um, I've got it on the top here. By the way, if you drop these on the floor, there's two things you can do. One is lay on your stomach with a flashlight and look for sparkles. And the other thing is, is to put a nylon over the end of uh, elastic banded onto the end of uh, your uh, vacuum hose and vacuum and you'll it's amazing all the little goodies you'll find at the end of the stocking there so okay so we're set to zero so I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna measure my diameter and this should be about two it's 1.98 my calipers I think are a little off but as long as they're off they're gonna be off on everything I measure so it doesn't matter this says they're two millimeters, I'm getting 1.98. So now that I know that, I want to get a drill bit that's approximately a third that size. Um, and without doing extensive math, um, I'm going to, actually I'm probably going to have to do, get my calculator. <laughs> so there it is. So let's do, let's do 1.9, let's do 1.98 divided by three. And we've got a 0.66 um, size drill bit, which I think I've got here. This is a 0.77. This will be good enough. I mean, it's not going to have to be absolutely exactly a third. We're talking about 0.10 of a millimeter. So I'm just going to use this because I have it. Um, the, so now that we've determined the diameter of our stone, we also know what size burr. Uh, we're going to use drill bit we're going to use but I'm not going to go there yet. The second thing you need to do is figure out where you're going to put your stone. So let's say I'm going to put mine right about here. Kind of make an S shape and 
you need to make, or since we're going to be drilling, you need to do um, your little divot for drilling so your drill bit doesn't skitter all over the place. And I have my handy dandy quick release today, thank goodness. Um, also, you want to lubricate your bits. I've got a chunk, big chunk of beeswax here. Let me get that off there because I don't want to drill on steel. Too many little doodads going on. And once again, you want to keep this perpendicular. Where are my optimizers? Why they're on your head? I'm not going real fast. I don't want this to get boiling hot. Um, the drill bit because I'll ruin the temper on it. So I take it out, maybe clean it off, maybe put a little more of this on. Wasn't that fun? Maintaining perpendicularity. It could be a new word. Okay, so we're through at this point. And there's a little fuzzball on the back of that. I'm going to show you how to deal with that now by talking about the uh, the burr we're going to use. So here are the three types of burrs that can be used for setting flush stone, flush set stones. This is a heart burr. Notice that it's um, it's got a sharp edge. It does mimic the shape of um, a stone. So does the um, setting burr. But this one has perpendicular walls. Um, the bottom notice is also like the coulee and the um, pavilion on a um, faceted stone. And then the ball burr. Um, the ball burr is, some people really like this because it, it's, it gives you a lot of wiggle room if the stone isn't perfect. Um, because it's a round and not a very specific angle, sometimes the stone fits better, especially if it's a hand cut stone. These two stones, uh, uh, stone bur setting burrs, are um, just fine for the machine cut stones because it is a set shape that the stones are mimicked by by machine. Boy, that was kind of a rambling sentence. Um, so anyway, these are the three that are used to cut. So what I want to do um, at this point, after I've drilled my hole, is I want to do something called an azure. And an azure is basically, you can take a round burr or a um, setting burr or a heart burr and the back side of where you drilled, you're going to take your little burr, which should be appro approx appropriate to the size of your stone. You know, I wouldn't necessarily want to go in with this massive uh, round one to, to make this whole azure, but what it does is it kind of finishes the back of the stone, the setting, nicely makes it a little prettier. So, and then you plus it also removes the um, debris that I have left over from drilling the hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the azure now with my little ball burr. Okay, so, oh man, where are my optimizers? Okay. Trying to keep it in place there. And that's enough right there for that. It's just a it's just a pretty. So that's the back side. So that we're done with. Um, and um, I'm gonna get ready to go on to the next portion of this adventure. So I need to choose um, a flame burr or a ball burr that is remember the this is a flame burr um, or a ball burr that is um, 0 0.20 smaller than my diameter approximately um, and what we're going to do with these this or the rat or the ball burr is open up some of the material in um, in our hole here because these setting burrs are really expensive and you want a cheaper, the ball burrs are cheap, so you want to have them, or the flame burrs, um, you want to have them do a lot of the removal and then therefore they get more worn. So we don't want to open it up too much, we just want to remove a lot of the debris and then we'll go in with our, our setting burr. Uh, in this case, for this technique that I use, and 
I think for most settings, um, you want to go with a, a, a setting burr that is smaller than your stone because these things always cut a little bigger than the um, size of this. And a lot of that is because we do wiggle a little bit. But even if you're perfect, this does remove a little more material. In the case of the way that I'm going to show you how to set, that you want your hole smaller, your seat, I should say, smaller because the stone is going to come in at an angle, go into the side of this and tap down. So it's like a pressure fit. I'm going to draw you a picture. I'm draw it, trying to draw it. So let's see, here's your seat that you've cut and your stone's going to come in at an angle. This is probably not to scale or, oh, it should have a point there. Oh, and then I, you'll, we're going to be tapping this down and it's going to, it's going to pressure fit inside the setting. So that, that was the stone. <laughs> In case anybody can't recognize it. So we want to cut this hole a little smaller, otherwise the stone's just going to plop right down in the hole and there's not going to be any tension all around the edges of it. Um, so let me get rid of that fabulous drawing. I'm going to sign it and send it to a museum immediately. Um, I'm going to take my little flame burr here. I have a little brown one here I could use too, but I'll use the flame just to be venturesome. And a little grease. And I'm just gonna I'm try to see it. There we go. I'm just gonna open up this area a little bit. I don't wanna go too 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 far. But I do want the stone the table on the stone to be flush with the metal, so we do want to have it pretty deep down in here. This is a um, technique that takes practice. Don't expect to do your first one perfectly. Or your third. Twelfth. Okay, so now I'm going to move to my preordained size here. This is, I'm using a, basically a two millimeter stone and I'm using a 1.9 millimeter burr. Which I'm also going to brace up. And this is really important to try to keep this thing as perpendicular. Can you see me okay? As perpendicular as possible. And I don't want to go too fast or burn out my burr. So at this point you can start checking the fit. Here's our little stone which I'd like to turn over. I'm going to put the table face down. Don't drop it on the floor. See, it's it's not even close. It should be sitting way farther down inside the metal. So I could go back to my um, my uh, flame burr or bud burr or ball burr, but I'm just going to keep hacking on with my setting burr. Actually, no, I'm not. I mean, just, I've changed my mind. I'm a woman. I'm allowed. This is a round one. We'll try a round one now for fun. Let's put more material away. Okay, that's that's a gooder. That's gooder. I'm much happier now. Now we're getting better. See how it's starting to sit sideways in, in there a little farther? Let me push it down a little bit. Still need to take out more material though. I want that to to be like m m about halfway at least in the hole when it's put sideways like that. So this is this is the annoying part because you you got to check every couple of spins, especially when you get towards the the part where you're getting near the end, because otherwise you'll cut it too deep and then the stone will just fall right through the back of the metal. Inside there. Okay. Hope my breath wasn't terrible, guys. Okay. 
We're almost there, but we're not quite yet. You just keep working at it. So my stone is sitting, if I lay it flat, it's sitting close to the surface. So um, I'm, I'm about ready to take, I don't know if you can see that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this back out and angle it in the hole so that one end is facing down like that. And then I'm going to take this little tool. Um, you want to use, I have a steel block here. You want to use copper because it's soft and it won't smash your stone up. This actually needs to be finished. You just get a piece of rod, copper rod, and some files and file this to like a dull point. This isn't really messed up. It's got too much of a lip here and I need to deal with it, but it should work for our purposes here. So what I'm going to do is take the um, copper rod and put it... Stupid thing moved. Put it on the high side of the stone. I've got the stone angled in here. And I'm going to tap this down. If this had been cleaner and smaller, I wouldn't have made that lovely divot there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if my stone table, the table of the stone is level and it's not. It's a little high on this side. So I'm gonna, and remember this goes on the stone, the copper. So I'm going to tap it again. And I'm not, you know, pounding this thing, but I'm hitting it hard enough for it to go in. So that looks pretty good. So now what I need to do is um, I'm going to start the burnishing process. Um, the stone is theoretically snapped in here and um, the next step, as I said, will be to, to burnish that. So we get ready for that and see you in a sec. So for the burnishing of the little bit of metal around the outside of the stone, I'm sure there's a technical term for it. Um, you can make your own little burnishers by um, getting like old um, any flex shaft burrs and like snapping or saw on the top off and then you put this part into your flex shaft and get an old file, pretend that's not there, pretend, 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 and get a file, old file, the, or one that you use with steel and file uh, a point on it. But let me step back a hair on that. You should probably anneal the steel first. So what you want to do is heat it up to cherry red and let it cool, air cool, or stick it in some charcoal um, or cat litter or something to let it cool slowly. See my video on making chasing tools to learn how to anneal steel. So once it's annealed, it's soft, and then you can use the files. Nice. What the heck is that? Um, use the files to m make a nice rounded point. So what you want it to look like is more, more fabulous collectible drawings. Is you want to have this kind of shape on it. So it's a graduated point with a rounded tip on it. And these are going to be ridiculously difficult to hold in your hand while burnishing. So you can take um, a little dowel, drill a hole that's slightly smaller, and pound the um, the shaft into the uh, wood. Put a little glue, wood glue in there if you want, or uh, one of the super glue types. Um, this is uh, another form of holder. These come with like exacto blades or something like that and kits. Um, and this is, um, I use a tool that is used for, um, I think it's embossing metal. And I just kind of smooth this down um, with sandpaper and, and you can buff these too. Um, I would take your points, I forgot to mention that because I am old! Um, you want to sand this down and then go and buff it too. So and remember only use steel dedicated buffers for buffing steel. So the, what the, the point is here is that you want a nice rounded edge on here and something pretty small, especially if you're going to be working with these two millimeter or less stones. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to come in at a 45 degree angle and push the metal over the stone in like four points 
I'm just kind of moving it around there. And this is starting the process um, of the, oh god, it's so hard to see, of, put, of doing the rub over on the stone. At this point you want to check to see if your stone is actually set in there. So you need, I'll use this, what's this? Maybe this will fit in there. I'm going to come from behind and give it a push. And if it comes out, it's not set. That did not come out. So that's good. So now we can go ahead and finish up um, working all the way around the so stone at a 45 degree angle. This is the hard part. I'm really sloppy at this. I usually have to do a lot of cleanup. Don't do it every day, so I'm not a pro at it. So once you get your 45 done, gosh, if I could only see, I have to get that cataract operation. Then you want to go in perpendicular, and you're going to go around the whole stone and further push the metal over. And if you have to do any cleanup, there's um, these little polishing pins you can use that I just put directly into my flex shaft and you can go around and clean up any of these little doodahs there or you can fine point your sandpaper like this and come in. I usually put my fingernail over it and clean up around like that. Might need a different grit because that's a pretty big groove there. Um, so that's basically how uh, to flush set this style. Um, you can also use the Harpers for this, um, but I will talk about the Harpers at a different time because this video is of a... So thank you for coming and this is Nancy LT Hamilton signing off and go California! It's raining! Woo! Bye!